Hey everybody, Chonky here. Today we're going to be going through the Dark Hollow on Nightmare. I'll go ahead and show you my stats. I'll show you my inventory. I'll just go uh, pretty quick so you can stop if you actually want to look at the stats of each item. And we're just going to be going with the top loadout of weapons. My, uh, my hammer and mace for the uh, set bonuses that it gives my skills. I'll show you those. Here's my heroism. Oh. All right. So we are gonna do, um, I'm gonna try and do like 100%. I might not break every single box or barrel or kill every single, and I will show you um, how to open the chest of the seven. It requires six optional bosses that don't give you a chest. Instead, they give you a key. I do, uh, I would like to apologize. If I do sound a little congested, I'm just getting over being sick. So the Dark Hollow is actually a pretty interesting dungeon. There's some really unique stuff here. Um, there is a boss where you could potentially farm legendary gear. Uh, it's a mimic boss. And then there's uh, the second to last floor. Is uh, it, it has these tower guardians, and they will give you uh, unique loot depending on who you kill last. So I'll get into that when we get to that room. But yeah, there, there's a lot going on here. So right away when we first get in here, we're going to find our first boss. Um, he runs away after you deal about 30% damage. So going to help him a few times. But once he gives himself a shield, he runs away. So now he's going to run off. Comes up here and then he just disappears. You'll see these nursery pods. Um, some of them spawn units. So just watch out for that. So that Clutch Lord Sizzix pops up right here again. He appears at the end of the room, but once you get to about here, he aggroes you. Yeah, he's, he's already coming up here. Or maybe not. Maybe... Oh, he's stuck right there. Okay. I'm used to this guy hunting me down. Okay, so that first boss, or the first boss for the chest of the seven, is right over here, up this little ramp. Right here. Oh, where'd he go? Oh, there he is. He's hiding from me. Oh, he's right on top of me. So yeah, once once I kill Blylock, he's not gonna drop a chest, but you're gonna see that I I got a cursed key, a hollowed hammer fragment, and some other loot. So uh, a lot of the a lot of the people in the Discord believe that the cursed key that he drops is for that door in the Crypt of Horrors. I'm not entirely sure that's what it's meant for because it does open part of the chest of the seven. So. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what they're going to do with the Crypt of Horrors door, but yeah, that cursed key is for the Chest of the Seven at the end of this dungeon. 
Also, there was that that rock over there with the um, Cthulhu-esque face on it. That's part of the mission. If you're playing through on normal, you will have to uh, touch that to continue the mission. Um, so this room, there are two paths. There's a lower path and an upper path, and they both connect to the same spot. So what I'll do is I will show you really quick. We're just going to rush through here. I'm just going to run through this, and then on my way back through, I'll kill everybody, and then we'll take the top path. Okay, so... This is where the bottom path leads. You come out at the top of a waterfall. This is uh, our next room. There's two bosses in here. Technically three bosses. Um, but yeah, so up here, uh, you can go over here. That's just a pit that you die at. I'll show you really quick. I'm not gonna jump in there, but um, the, the other path in that room that we were just in, it leads over there and there's a chest over there. So we're gonna go get that. There's also loot over here, which I'm gonna grab really quick. Oh, hang on. We'll kill all these guys in just a moment. Also, there's nothing down here except for two treasure chests. Uh, I'm not going to go grab them because it takes a sec. But, um, yeah, if you guys want to grab them, there they are. Alright, so we're back in this room. I'm just going to jump up here. So, uh, here's that bridge, like that, that treasure chest I mentioned right here. Oh, getting pulled around. Oh my gosh. Oh, 
chest over here. Discord's going off. Hang on, let me silent Discord, silent Discord really quick. that room we were at before. Uh, excuse me. So there's three bosses in this room. There's Fern and there's Turgamax. They uh, they they fight together. Once you get Fern to about half health, Turgamax is because he starts running over side of the room. These guys do have an anti-kite mechanic. They will uh, they'll pull you in. Uh, that's to prevent wizards and rangers from uh, just cheesing them from really far away. So, um, this next boss is really easy to miss because he's just kind of tucked away. This is going to be the second boss towards that chest of the seven. Gonna come over here, and he's going to be right up here in the back, this guy right here. He's going to give you the obsidian key. No chest got dropped, but I did get an obsidian key. So it's going to be two of six. And I know it's called the chest of the seven. It's because the seventh piece is dropped by the the final boss of the dungeon. Okay, so this room, you could walk around the, the pathway all the way down. Um, another thing you could do is you could just drop down. Whoop, 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 not like that. <laughs> okay. Hey. Oh my gosh, we're back here. Thought we'd be a little closer. But yeah, so you if you do it right, you can drop whoop, right into the boss arena. But I'm mainly uh, dropping down so I can get here to the blacksmith. We're not going to hang out too long. We're just going to sell everything that's below legendary. And then we're going to be on our way. I like to hang on to my legendary items so I can see if there's any that are four or five stars that I might want to give to another character. These are booby traps, by the way. If you step on them, they, they do hurt you. Oh, I thought these ones did. Huh. I'm a liar. Okay, so this guy is not an optional boss. He, he I mean, uh, not for the test of the center. He is skippable, though. If you, if you jump from up above, you can fall right outside the arena down there. You can't skip it.
Okay. So these guys work just like Karg from the Crypt of Horrors. Oop, that was a bad parry. They throw rocks at you and you can either parry the rock, hit the rock, or if you're like a row, you can stealth or uh, like shadow step behind them. They don't give you anything though, they're just big, big meat shields. HP sponges. So there's a boss here. There's another boss in this room as well. Intruders! You will dare into the home of the Highlord! You will seek to undo the Master's plans! I, Sultan, will end you! <laughs> too soon. So I know it seems like I've just been uh, like taking weird turns in this room. It's just a big circle. Uh, the uh, entrance is right over there, and the exit's right here. So we're gonna go ahead and continue on. Another little jump puzzle.
So this is actually a weapon. I can grab it. News Justice. There's another news weapon. Um, it's a scythe that you get in the fourth dungeon, the Lair of the Kyrvids. Fight a lot of uh, Keiko demons and eat type enemies. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but. Generally, these opponents are pretty easy. Um, they don't have very good resistances. Yeah, that guy's stuck in the wall. Oh, so th this this scythe that he has is the scythe I was talking about. That's a uh, it's a unique drop in the fourth dungeon. Oh my god. this boss, one thing to look out for is he'll put down little uh, circles of damage, that thing right there, and he'll stack them. And if, if they stack on top of each other, the damage stacks as well. Just watch out for that. He also throws you into the sky. Not very high, but a little bit. And you will take some fall damage if you don't dodge when you the ground. We're going to come up on another section here that's going to have uh, two of the bosses for the chest of the seven. And uh, one of them is especially easy to miss. The first one is going to be over here on the left. In that, in that tiny little crevice, uh, there is a boss. Yeah, right here. Let's carry on the grim. So yeah, this guy gives you the third key to the chest of the seven.
Here's the other chest of the seven boss. Can I get this treasure chest? It's such a troll. All right, so now we're at four of six keys for the chest of the seven. And the la oh, and the last two are in uh, the same area. It's actually the, the room with the tower guardians that I mentioned earlier. If you want to do the Tower Guardian thing, you will have to kill these two guys. I'll show you guys uh, the silly little ladder. I don't know why this ladder is here, but if you take the ladder... <laughs> what a silly little ladder. Second blacksmith. So this boss can be a bit of a pain for a champion to throw, because he does push you against the wall. So here is the Tower Guardian room that I was talking about. This is probably the biggest, most complex room in this dungeon. There's several bosses, a lot of loot, a lot of mobs, uh, and Crick as well. If you remember Crick from the Crypt of Horrors, his hideout is in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go on the left side of the room first. I'll show you that mimic boss that I mentioned at the start of the cave, or the dungeon. So, here's that Mimic boss. Oop. 
That's right, I knocked, I knocked something over. Okay, so, you talk, you talk to one mimic, they all get upset. This boss used to be a lot stronger. It's not so bad anymore. Um, it is still an excellent spot to farm legendary gear. Once you defeat all the mimics, a final chest comes down and it gives you a whole bunch of guaranteed legendary drops. So if you wanted to start the dungeon and then just rush that boss, a lot of people do it. Uh, so, you know, that's definitely an option. So what we're going to do is we're going to follow this side of the room. We're going to, this is going to avoid all the other bosses, but I'll just show you what's over here. It's a lot of loot and some mobs and just stuff to, to, to grab. Nothing unique, though. That's pretty much everything over here. Okay, so um, this is the end of the room on the left. This will continue on towards the end of the dungeon. That way, right there. We're not going to go that way just yet. So, if you remember me mention, mentioning Crick, Crick's hideout is actually down there. We're going to go check that out in a moment. What we are going to do now, though, is we're going to do the Tower Guardians. So, in order to get into the towers, you need to uh, take a portal. And the portal is guarded by uh, optional bosses. The, the last two bosses that give you keys to the chest of the set. So, we're going to come over here. And if you remember me mentioning that whoever you kill last um, for the Guardians will determine your loot, there there is a Mage, a Rogue, a Ranger, and a Champion boss. We're going to do the Champion as the last one, and we're going to get a special Greatsword drop. If you do the Ranger last, I believe you get a special Amulet. Uh, or, sorry, a special Trinket. If you do the Rogue last, you get an Ice Dagger. If you do the mage last, you get a cap of brilliance that uh, lights up, provides it's like a light source. So it's it's not really useful right now, but who knows? Maybe in the future there will be a dungeon where it's completely blacked out and you need a light source. In which case, that's the way to go. So anyway, Snarl Tooth here is going to give us another key for the chest of the seven, and then once we kill him, he's going to open up a portal to one of the towers. And as you kill the guardians, once you kill, you know, for every one you kill, the others power up. We're gonna start with the ranger. He goes down pretty easy.
And then up here's the rogue, I believe. Yep. Now that we're done with this section, we're just going to drop out of the tower. So that's where we just were. That's where Snarltooth was. We're going to go over to the next area. Oh, wait. Wait, wait, wait. I got turned around. That's where Snarltooth is. Right over there. We're going to go this way. This will this is the last boss we'll need to kill for the chest of the seven. So, up here's the mage. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. She hurts. Wow. So yeah, like I said, they all get stronger. <laughs> all right. So Eric is, like I said, gonna give a unique drop. trying to beat my ass. Alright, well, that's an easy win for me. W for Chonky. Okay. So once you defeat the last of the Tower Guardians, a new portal opens up and it takes you to the small tower in this room. So you get two materials chests. And then down here, there's more destructibles. Then if you go up here, you'll find a little journal for some lore. And then uh, right here is the chest. So I got the Sword of Divine Justice. Let's take a look at that really quick. Oh, only one star, zero stars. At the discretion of the gods, justice is served to your enemies. You can tell it's a uh, unique drop because of the flavor text at the bottom. Normal items don't have that. But, uh, yeah, so let's take a look at this sweet little greatsword. Yeah, unique drop. 
Because so I'm just about to get us right here. Anyway, let's beat the mission, or the dungeon. Um, so, the boss over here, he has a very, very powerful poison beam attack. And especially if it's your first playthrough, or if you're like a, like a wizard, or a ranger, or like a, a squishier class, you might want to come grab this buff. I don't know the specifics of it, but it seems to reduce... Um, some of the poison damage from the boss. What up, Crick? So this right here, the Scalician Shrine. You do have to move kind of quickly though, the buff only lasts for five minutes, so we're gonna head right back out. This boss has uh, some pretty powerful poison attacks, and is also the the most unappealing looking fleshlight I've ever seen. This move, yeah, that move right there, that's the one that you want to grab that buff for, because that poison beam will just melt you. to the last room of the dungeon. If you dodge right before the water's surface, you'll actually stop at the water. I think it's related to fall damage, like how fall you how far you would fall in the water. If you dodge right before the ground, you don't take any damage as well. So this boss is Flesh Render. He's being subdued by a whole bunch of warlocks. So, and uh, he won't attack you until you... Or, sorry, witch doctors. He won't attack you until all the witch doctors are dead. Which, um, if you're playing a squishier class, you might want to do what I'm doing right now and kill them one at a time. If you're playing something like a wizard, though, and you drop a meteor, it's going to damage all of the witch doctors, but they will all attack you as well as Flesh Render.
there's two bosses left. The next boss definitely has my favorite name out of this whole dungeon. to the wonderfully named Zygogo. Yes, Master. I will enhance the focal point to strengthen it. Wait, someone approaches. So Zygogo, once you deal about a third of his health, told your defeat at the hands of Zygogo. Zygogo. He, uh, he opens up two portals and they, uh, they just spawn imps. It's not really that bad of a gimmick. Uh, you just can't hurt him while he's opening the portals. Ooh -hoo -hoo, 700 HP, holy cow. And then he'll do it again once he's at about 30%. done. So this next room, this is the room that has the chest of the seven. I'm going to go ahead and open up all of them except for the final one right now because we need the emblems. You'll notice that each chest gives me some gear and then some sort of emblem. You have to, you get the last emblem from the boss uh, down the stairs and there's a shrine in the boss room. That will make the key for the big chest. So we're 
gonna open this one. And I think the loot tables for the Chest of the Seven are pretty good. The last time I opened it, I got like 15 Eternal Essence, uh, two Eternal pieces of equipment, and one of them was a three-star Eternal set item that I already have a four-star of. So it was a really good drop. Unfortunately, I just have one that's a little bit better. So this boss, Iothir, uh, I still have trouble with this boss. Uh, he has several things to watch out for. He'll summon portals that shoot tracking fireballs. He will summon a doppelganger, which will kick the crap out of you, and you have to kill the doppelganger before you can damage him again. So it's something to look out for if you're playing a champion or a rogue, especially. The doppelganger is very, very strong. They have way more HP than you do, and do a crap ton of damage. Oh. All right, so there's my doppelganger. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! I have 50 HP. Holy cow! We're gonna we're gonna use some potions real quick. Get some stats or right, some stat increases. All right, where's where's me? Try and kill Iothir as quickly as I can so that he doesn't summon another clone of me. Nope, too late. This chest gives us the Tentacle Skull Emblem. And we're going to take that over here to the Shrine of the Seven. So once you put all seven emblems in there, you get the Orb of Iothir. Now we're going to take that up to the uh, the big chest. And with that, we will have completed the Dark Hollow on Nightmare. What do we get? Leggings of the Holy, Holy Order, Defiant Chest... Defiant Breastplate of Crusading and 22 Eternal Essence? Holy cow. Uh, let's see. My inventory's a mess. Let's see. We got this one. Zero stars. And we got this one. Zero stars. Dang. That's a shame. Oh, well. Yeah, so Chest of the Seven. I think it. I think it's worth it to try and get it. Um... I think it's I think it is guaranteed eternal drops as well as some extra essence. But anyway guys, um, I'll go ahead and work on getting one up for the uh, getting a new video up for the grasslands. And yeah, otherwise thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe and all that jargon and I'll catch you guys next time. Mm -hmm. Kiss kiss.